recording is on. Hey everyone, it is Mo here from the Bitcoin Design Community, and we are on the 15th of December, inching our way towards Christmas. It is 15th of December 2022, and this is the um, UX research call uh, within the Bitcoin Design Community. It is call number nine. Um, welcome everyone if you're watching listening in we're going to be focusing on the ux research toolkit today we have art here who is a ux researcher we have christoph just listening in and ed also listening in and they're basically helping me to build out the bitcoin um, the ux research toolkit and jan should be jumping on in a minute as well so yeah let's dive into it what would you guys like to talk about today Art has done something really good. So uh, Art, I'll let you just uh, jump in with that nice document you've created. Um, everything I do pales in the work that you do, obviously. You're the mastermind. I just wanted to give a little bit of um, structure to this collective uh, direction we're taking. And so to get there, I created a very brief skeleton of a project plan. The skeleton acts as sort of like an accountability system for us internally helps direct where we're headed in terms of milestones and within milestones the tasks that we're going to be taking and gives us a rough sense of um you know what we should be aiming for in terms of an actual launch rollout of this uh, deliverable internal deliverable external deliverable so to um to an outsider to somebody who's just stepping into this project, they could take a look at this document and quickly understand the purpose of it, what's been done, and what's still to come, right? That's the goal of it. And for folks that are on the call, I'm just going to share the link to it. It should be visible. If not, I'll change the permissions, but it should be visible to people looking in. Cool. I've just shared it. Do you want to maybe share your screen and just um, walk us through walk us you, through what you created? Would you mind sharing yours, Mo? Because I'm on yeah. a single screen right now, and just so yeah, I can yeah. see humans and also type things that we're talking about, that'd be really helpful. Just let me know if you can see my screen. I'm in a hotel lobby in Banff, Alberta. Have you ever heard of Banff? No. No? It's like the, uh, the Alps of um, North America. It's standing here beautiful so you're near the alps at the moment the the alps of north america it's like the same vibe oh nice i'm very yeah, yeah, jealous yeah. i love the mountains yeah, wow. yeah yeah i'll send you guys pictures after okay so mm -hmm. this this document will collaborate on it your screen is beautifully gigantic can we zoom in quite a lot more oh zoom in yeah uh, yeah, I have a, let me just see if I can do this here. Is that better? Mm, substantially better. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Cool. Okay. Table of contents, blah, 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 blah. So again, I, I, when I create documents, I always want somebody stepping in who has no context about something to be able to know who to contact, what was done, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Mm -hmm. So that metadata helps us get there. Let's scroll down background i want us to have maybe a paragraph or so that says you know mogashni naidu has um birthed the beautiful thoughts that now is manifesting into reality and then important links this will be like as we work on maybe like sub deliverables where people can go to access them no worries jan so good to have you roles and responsibilities hey jan again. welcome hello um just to have, you know, uh, Christoph adding you as well, but anyone who like wants to contribute or even uh, wants to offer like a um, some feedback is welcome to participate. This is informal, but just so just so the community knows who who was involved, right? Gotcha. Uh, we'll fill that out. Project goals. This super briefly, I wrote out. You know, um, it really to me, it matters to write less. So I wrote as few words as possible about what we're doing. If this is right, cool. Again, feel free to destroy it, rip it apart, use suggest mode. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Implementa. Okay. 
Um, let's keep going, project timeline. So here's what we probably should discuss. Um, I broke this out into basically four-ish, five-ish steps that are still remaining. One is to uh, create, so when I say create draft, this includes like internal revisions, internal um, uh, reviews and iterations within the document. I think that by a month from now, we should have like a pretty good alpha ready. Yeah, for um, sure. I think that's a good timeline. I think that um, if we do, yeah, if we do the jobs to be done with Jan in the next call, then I can add jobs to be done in the build and scope section. Um, and then we should have the first draft of build and scope. Yeah, perfect. Exactly. Sounds good. Within, <clears throat> within the draft, I propose we send this to three people at the very least for three additional people for review. Let's say one person who knows nothing about Bitcoin, but is a UX researcher. One person who's a designer within the Bitcoin space, but knows nothing about UXR. I want edge cases so we get diverse opinions, right? Love that. And I love it that you're willing to lead that. Thank you very much. So I can just concentrate on building the toolkit. Perfect. The feed, uh, get review, feedback. I'm actually, we're going to write these down. So one UXR not in Bitcoin, one Bitcoin. And I'm sure we can lean into Christoph and others to like recruit uh, some designers in the Bitcoin space who don't do UXR, right? Yeah, we just post in the general channel in the Bitcoin design community um, or on Twitter or, you know, there, there are these um, uh, Discord and Slack channels for UX researchers as well. We could even, nah, no, we don't want UX researchers, no. But, but I think we, we, we can, do, we do. Mm, we want okay. one UX researcher who's not in Bitcoin because that could provide another perspective. Um, yeah, we at least one person in product. Yeah. Okay, so 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 we'll as as we're moving towards that, I can lead again this user testing session. Um, we can do like basically like moderated moderated usability tests about how to do moderated usability tests. But ultimately, it's to just get people's eyes on it, uh, get their feedback. You know what's working, what's not, etc. Yeah. Um, okay. We'll take that body of knowledge that we will have developed by then, and then. Uh, inject that into the second phase of the toolkit, which is the ship to market model. Um, and we'll rinse and repeat and we should be done by April. I offered a conservative timeline, meaning like it's very possible we'll get there a lot quicker, a lot quicker. I but... love this. I really, really like this that you put together. Thank you so much for putting that together. It's really, I'll hop in there, I'll add some bit about the background. Um, I'll add in, you know, roles and responsibilities. Feel free to just, you know, comment or add in. And then, um, yeah, perfect. Really good. I really like it. Yeah. Something that I've been thinking about as well, um, I'll stop sharing my screen, um, is that the UX Research Toolkit at the moment, it kind of lives on Notion because Notion is very easy and fluid for me to work with. It feels like working in Microsoft Word or no, sorry, Google Docs. Um, there is a thing, so I have the domain name, um, Bitcoin UX Research, um, and I'd like to essentially put that on that domain name. Um, so I'll have to figure out um, how to um, put the notion on that custom domain name. But that's, you know, that's still in time to come. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, my my internal project manager is like, okay, well, we got our milestones. Can we now talk about tasks and the yeah. like, requirements? You yeah. know what I mean? Like that's where my mind's going. That stuff yeah. gets me. Happy. So how do you? What do you think we could? Um, so at the moment, this is where we are here. We're in build and scope. So we have this. Let me. I'm not even sharing my screen. One second. So what we have at the moment? I have an idea. We have this. Um, is my screen? Oh. Yeah, yeah, your screen's good. I have an idea though. What you could do is you could literally just reroute that URL to the Notion uh, domain. Yeah. Like it, it's the low, lowest fidelity solution, but it will work. Yeah, I just want it to be on a good, easy to find kind of place. Um, but yeah, that can be figured out later on closer to the, um, closer to the launch. But um, we have this folder at the moment, which I've given Jan access to. And I can add stuff as well. Um, 
cool. So I'm adding Christoph as well. So we have this, um, we have this notion, that notion. <laughs> I'm, I'm just to totally notion here. <laughs> Sorry. So we have this, uh, we have this, um, this Google Drive. Um, thank you for adding in this one over here. So Art has added in project operations. Brilliant. Then we have the build in scope. We have ship to market and we have welcome. So how about we start talking about where we are right now, which is creating that draft of build and scope. That is pretty much where we are right now. Um, so we have these Google documents. Um, what's missing over here, and I will add in just a blank file, uh, create and share, is um, the user journey, um, jobs to be done. So that's the one that's missing in this folder. Um, and I'd like to do maybe that as our um, next call. Um, yeah. I don't know if, because then then that's going to be, that call is going to be Jan. It's going to be a Jan call. <laughs> Jan is the the passion one for, uh, this is a commercial for Notion. <laughs> Christoph said that in one of the calls as well. <laughs> Jan, so, Christoph said that during one of the calls as well, he's like, is this a promotion for Notion that I don't know about? <laughs> so, um Jan, yeah, I'd love you to, um, what's my affiliate? <laughs> I should get an affiliate link because this is just free promotion. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, Jan, are you happy to kind of lead that um, that next call on uh, jobs to be done? Yes. So I was thinking that exactly I can give, you know, a quick introduction uh, of my understanding of jobs to be done and basically show, you know, some let's say practices inside that framework. And then uh, along the way, I can also show basically my notion templates that I'm currently using at Swan for, for example, doing those jobs to be done customer interviews. And, you know, we can take a look and see, okay, if it is something that we can kind of Sort of duplicate or copy maybe some parts uh, to this uh, community uh, toolkit. So that that was kind of my idea. Uh, what I would prepare for the next call. Cool. So next meeting will be jobs to be done. Cool. Jobs to be done. Presentation by. Um, and then we can maybe just jam on um, jam on um, signal. You will like the. It will likely be a combination of a few things, Mo, where a part of it will be really like tightening up because I, I imagine that by then Jan and us will have created like a like a draft or like a like an alpha of a document and then yeah. that call will be to like finesse it. Does that make sense? That's perfect. Because that will accelerate us if we work asynchronously on that. Perfect. Um, and and Jan, does that does that land with you? Yeah, perfect. So basically, should yeah. I kind of pre prepare the templates for, for the jobs to be done uh, kind of before the call? That's what you are saying? I wouldn't even jump into templates, Jan. I would just like do a little, uh, and again, we can, we'll can we work on this collaboratively, but do a little like write up as we've done with the other uh, methods. Great. Like, Magashne, if you don't mind. Opening, yeah, sure. Um, perfect. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Yeah, I'm cool with that. I'm perfectly fine with that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I trust you guys and I trust that you guys will come up with because then it's like it's being created not only by one person because you guys also have a different perspective. So I'd be interested in seeing your perspective of how you would teach a new user. I'd be interested in seeing how you guys do that, that different perspective. So I'm all for it. Go for it. Go for it and do the jobs to be done. And then on the next call, we can... Um, yeah, just just talk about it a bit more, mash it out. Um, yeah, cool. What were your initial thoughts and feelings on these um, these Google documents? I'm going to jump into the first one, which is competitive research. And for for the I guess members of the community that might be listening in, we're just yeah. using Google to collaborate better and more quickly together. We're not going to necessarily stay with google docs as the actual outputs right 
Yeah. And then Mo, <laughs> when I'm making these suggestions, I uh, like literally just accept, 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 unless like you you disagree. So like the, no, there's no need to keep these iterations live for others. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I'll just click here. I'll accept. I'll have a read through it. Perfect. This is exactly how we work in the Bitcoin design community. This is perfect. Absolutely perfect. Yep. So I think the next steps are for myself um, to like really do a long sit with the competitive research and the other method that we talked about within um, this phase. Uh, that was like, a, I just, I only really had a little bit of time to offer, but I'm going to do a long big sit where I think we're going to, I'm going to bring us to like close to publish ready within yeah. the next little while. Um, but I won't necessarily, yeah, yeah. So that, that's my next commitment um, yeah. ahead of our next call. Cool. So I'll just write to art will um, look at competitive analysis um, fig jam. Cool. You are committing a lot here. <laughs> oh, I, I like this stuff. Like this. Cool. Yeah, this this gives me energy. This doesn't take energy away from me. Cool. Yeah, because then we then we'll basically have the competitive analysis one kind of ironed out a bit more. Um, yeah, pretty much closer to wrapping up the competitive analysis one. So the competitive analysis one, I'm really um, I've really kept it focused on Bitcoin wallets. Um, that's going to be, yeah, that's going to be, this is pretty much when I kind of did some competitive analysis for Bitcoin wallets. I kind of use this kind of structure, um, but I'd be curious on your feedback on this one. So feel free to just comment in this, um, in this Fig Jam document. I think you guys have access to it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you want... Um, I have maybe one comment that uh, I didn't put it there because it's more like sort of conceptual. Mm -hmm. Because I think uh, competitive analysis, as, as you put it there, is good. Mm -hmm. But also, and it's really, again, kind of related to the jobs to be done thinking. Mm -hmm. It's also not just like kind of direct competitors, mm -hmm. but also basically how people are currently solving the struggle. So somebody, I think some kind of jobs to be done, practitioners call it like more like sort of alternative analysis or whatever. But but the point is that, for example, I don't know, like you might not use any tool right now and you might doing you might do it. I don't know. OK, I don't have a good example in, in Bitcoin, but like, right, it's like, OK, you might use whatever, some hardware wallet. Um, mm -hmm. Or you might use some paper to write the seat, uh, all right? Like you have like even kind of things in kind of physical world that you might use for currently solving it. And why I'm mentioning it because it, it's useful to know how people are basically solving it right now. So if we are, for, especially for example, if we are building something brand new, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that the people that will use it doesn't have the struggle right now and they are somehow dealing with that struggle mm -hmm. but once we introduce this new tool hopefully they will switch but uh kind of knowing how they do it right now it, it, it's good right so i guess good uh, good uh, good um uh good uh, example would be like yeah, exactly how, how you are uh, storing your your seats and mm -hmm. you know it could be you know paper it could be somehow digitally. It could be that you are not doing self-custody at all, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, understanding this is, is useful. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I'm not sure if it's then really a competitive analysis because maybe the competitive yeah. analysis that you are kind of specifically about something, this is, but here this kind of alternative is more like, again, kind of more general approach, uh, but just kind of mentioning uh, this, this thought, so. Mm -hmm. Do you guys, I was curious on your, on your insights with regards to this. So um, when I, this competitive analysis uh, fig jam document that I created, and then feel free to comment in on it asynchronously, uh, because this is a direct comparison. So this is comparing apples with apples. 
So I'd be curious um, when you guys comment on um, this, this sort of framework is whether you advise people to do competitive analysis with apples with apples or whether you also like to go shoot off in another direction and say hey let's have a look at a completely different industry for example a traditional banking application and if you do decide to do that why do you do that and when would you advise on doing that does that question make sense yes uh, and i think it kind of get back to the topic that we discussed last time it really depends on the situation because you know, I think it's a big difference if the, we are doing the competitive analysis kind of on product level or if it's really like designer, you know, brainstorming new solution, right? So let's say it's a it's a designer kind of looking for inspiration. Then yeah. I think looking at direct competitor, but also how it's currently kind of similar patterns, how, how they are uh, in the traditional banking system, I think it's useful to look at. Mm. And for example, for that alternative uh, kind of analysis that I talked a minute ago, I think that's actually useful for the product level because it kind of helps you to understand how, okay, how, how people are solving it right now. So uh, I think basically all methods should, in my opinion, be in the toolkit somehow mentioned, mm -hmm. but explain it in which situation it might be useful uh, and where it's not useful. And what are your thoughts, Art? I'm very boring um, when it comes to some of what we're talking about. And that's because I need this toolkit to be usable, mm -hmm. as usable as possible. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I definitely agree about the numerous edge cases that might exist in terms of uh, layering on a jobs to be done philosophy on even journey map. Uh, layering on jobs to be done philosophy on a competitive analysis. I agree within competitive analysis, Jan, you're hundred percent correct that there's different like uh, workflows that you could be taking. And in my work, uh, just like yourself, we will always look to um, sister practices, right? However, um, what is the most likely practice that somebody picking up the toolkit will be able to implement. And um, let's say that that's level one. And is level two, I think we need to ask ourselves, is level two, here's where you go to learn more, good luck. Or here's who you go to contact for more questions, mm -hmm. good luck. Mm -hmm. Or is it, here's the next more difficult method to implement, right? I don't have a solution. I'm, these are just thoughts that I'm, that I'm thinking through. Yeah, I, I like that, yeah. You wanted to say something, Jan? Uh, yeah, I agree. And I, I, I don't know like what's the right solution because exactly like we can end up with very detailed um, kind of toolkit that you need to read the whole thing and then it's not usable. Or we can have very simplified version. Yeah. Where my people kind of don't see maybe, you know, it, their use case, it's not there, right? So I guess some kind of balance and Basically, I think that's why we should probably start with something simple. Mm -hmm. That's my intuition. Start with something simple. And exactly. And then based on the feedback of the community, say, hey, like, okay, guys, you are missing this because we need this and I don't see it. And then we should maybe expand that uh, section because that's what people want to. But yeah, I, I would definitely start with something simple and get the feedback. And the thing is, this this UX research within the Bitcoin industry is so new at the moment. So if we create something that feels really simple and easy to use, then the likelihood of it being used will be higher. Um, and maybe when we're further down a year from now, the implementation, the process of you using UX research is, is further along and more projects in open source are using it, then they might be ready for version two, which would be what I mentioned. And yeah, so we keep it lean. We keep it lean. So maybe we can provide some direction towards, hey, if you'd like to be a little bit more, you know, advanced, you can do this. Here's the link, you know, maybe go figure it out yourself. But then what we create here will be like just really good quality, easy to understand. Because um, I know there's a thing, I, I know you guys have done it as well. You've jumped onto like, um, you've gone in Figma community 
and then you you type in the search for a specific template or something and then the template that appears in front of you is so complex that you just have this internal feeling of I, I, I don't even know where to start I don't even know if I want to use this um, yeah you're nodding your head <laughs> yeah, I, totally, I totally agree and it feels to me that generally like you know the Bitcoin design community is about Hey, I'm starting this project and there's zillions of things that I need to do. Yeah. So let, let me copy the 90% that is not important for me. And I will focus on those 10% that is kind of core for my product and, and that I will do kind of custom. But all those other things I can just kind of copy because it's good enough. And if later on I need to improve it, sure. But yeah, kind of this good enough mindset for, for the kind of start. I think yeah. that's what the whole project is about so yeah totally makes sense to me and i'm going to add in a general comment here which um which art made as well which i'm totally on board with is add in video add in video walkthroughs of um you know like for each that will come later of the toolkit love that idea one thing yeah. One thing I might do is is to just throw in another section in this project plan, which contains some of these min specs that we're talking about, or requirements that we're talking about, just so we could like trace the history of our, uh, trace the history of our ideas, and also just have a checklist to fulfill on. Good idea, like a tick, like a like a checklist, yeah. And as each thing is created, we can just check it off. Perfect, yeah, love it. So yeah any any general thoughts on and feelings on when you initially arrived at okay i've arrived at notion um this is kind of how mo built it out these are the pages um any general comments or thoughts on that i have some <laughs> first of all um it's incredible to see it in like built and, and existing uh, that's and I also think it could be from a navigation point of view where when somebody lands um, I, I just think of like the philosophy of above the scroll like the most important content should be above the scroll mm -hmm. it should be as few words as possible mm -hmm. uh, and there should be a clear call to action um, yeah. whatever that is I, I'm not saying that I've figured it out we will figure it out but yeah. that's my mind goes to those principles yeah okay let me just add in a note yeah and what about yourself what comes to mind okay mm -hmm. and this is on the welcome page yeah do you want to show us the welcome page yeah let me uh where is the toolkit um you are the keeper to... of the toolkit. yeah i'm gonna drag this screen in here Is this screen visible? Yeah, if you don't mind zooming in. Um, I think that might work. Is that bigger? Yeah. 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 So this is the welcome page. I mean, this is not pretty at the moment, but I just kept things very simple. Um, and I'm being very friendly here. I'm not using like difficult to understand language. I'm talking to someone as if they're my friend. Um, so that's kind of the the vibe i kind of wanted to give off um maybe it's too playful you know i've got like let's go <laughs> okay so then i've got the building scope out over here which we discussed um ship to market we have competitive research user journey mapping jobs to be done um, heuristic evaluation um, moderated usability tests and question mark um, in the first call that we had um <clears throat> In ship product to market, I know you guys voted on um, uh, which is this quantitative quantitative data, um, and I didn't add that one in here in ship to market. Uh, and the reason is is that in the uh, ecosystem at the moment, a lot of projects, well, actually ninety nine percent of the projects I've come across, they do not track any user data. It's like kind of just something that's not done. So we're going to have to figure out something else um, in terms of a suggested, yeah, 
one for that one. So that might also be something to to think about. Um, yeah. But by the way, one comment. Sorry, a bit again a different topic. But like uh, when I read build and scope out, I was thinking if it shouldn't be the other way around, like scope out and build. Scope <laughs> out and build, as opposed to build and scope out. Yeah, because it feels like that you first scope out, and yeah, then yeah. you build, actually build it, right? It's a really good point, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Good one. Um, let me just jump back into Notion. Yeah. So we're going to have to, this one is to be figured out. Um, yeah. How's the kit structured? Um, light introduction. Each tool will give you a light introduction and then a Figma or FigJam link. And then probably in here as well will be a video walkthrough. So that's probably that one there. Um, how much of research is enough? So here I'm trying to educate. Um, and I'm just trying to say, you know, we use triangulation to connect research insights to see if there are patterns and trends. I'm a little bit playful here in this image. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the welcome page. Um, you know, it's really minimal text. Yeah. So. Again, I, I think it's I think it's wonderful. It's, it, and if, if that's what folks saw, it would work well. I, I think together we can bring it up to the next, and we will bring it up to the next level. My contribution will be to give that a, a quick review and offer some insights as well. Perfect. Sure. Yeah. 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 And it, the other thing is like, it will look different once it's on a website because Notion has this way of like pulling out texts to the very edge of the boundaries of the, of the frame. Yeah. And that's like very poor usability for reading, right? Like we want at least like two thirds maybe of a screen on the internet, right? Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, yeah. Stuff like that just comes to my mind. Small stuff. Anything else, Jan? You were going to say something? I, I was uh, actually going to ask. So, um, when, where exactly this this will live? It will be like really standalone website, or as a section of the current, uh, you know, Bitcoin Design Community Guideline? Or well, the initial. I'm thinking of building it on Notion because I think Notion is going to be my website for the mm -hmm. UX research toolkit. And then I'm guessing the Bitcoin design guide will kind of then be able to link to link different it. parts within the, cause like the, the vision that I have is like, let's say um, something in the Bitcoin design guide is talking about personas, then they can be a link on that page. Cause right mm -hmm. now I'm, I'm, I'm writing a page um, for the Bitcoin design guide on Bitcoin user personas. Mm -hmm. For example, at the bottom of that page, they can then add a link like, hey, do you want to create your own persona? Here's the link to the UX research toolkit. Yep. You know, so that's kind of the idea. It lives on Notion and then there'll be a redirect from um, BitcoinUXResearch.com, right. which is the right. domain name that I bought. I bought it over a year ago, that domain name, and I've just right. renewed it for another two years. <laughs> cool, like, cool. So basically, either people will kind of know about it, and for example, I don't know, will bookmark your your bot domain, or uh, they will, you know, use the current Bitcoin Design Community Guideline, and there will be basically links to specific things inside the notion that we are building here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I think my only my only feedback is, yeah, I, I would put there some kind of. I think exactly the. The infographics is really nice. I almost feel that if if it would be clickable, that would be even awesome, right? That you can I don't know, click on user story mapping. But probably that's not possible in Notion. So I, I would somewhere probably at the top have kind of you know basically you know bullet points with all the content, so you can quickly you know go where where you need to. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, the infographics, I think it's it's really great to kind of, so you are able to easily understand what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, it's super possible. Okay, Art says it's possible to do clickable images within Notion. Okay, okay. cool. Cool. Not, not, not even so much images as much as we could um, be creative and playful and have the links as like a two column, for example, and then just like a small uh, summary image just above. You, like we, we can play within the limitations of Notion, but still create a wonderful product. Nice. Yeah. Christoph, do you have any thoughts or you would you like to remain silent? Totally up to you. I know we've been like talking on for almost 45 minutes. <laughs> Uh, hey, uh, yeah, uh, what, on which aspect of what you talked about? How it fits in the guide or how to make things clickable? Oh, as you, as you feel like commenting on, I mean, both if you like, yeah. Only halfway. Uh, I, I kind of follow it along, but I was also halfway into my other work. Um, so I don't have a ton. Uh, I'm just really excited that, that uh, you're working on all this together. And I like to hear that, you know, the focus on keeping things really simple and picking up kind of the, the Bitcoin, the larger Bitcoin design or community with very, very simple entry points into this UX research, uh, because I, I, it can be just be really abstract or scary. So that's good. In terms of the um, integration with the guide, I, I don't really know. I mean, I think it just kind of depends on what the output is and how it all fits together. I don't think if, if it's, if it's like 10, 20 pages and this massive thing with lots of people working on it, it probably shouldn't be in the guide. It should probably just reference it. Maybe, maybe, you know, have some quotes in there linked in some very strategic places and kind of be a, I don't know, partner in crime or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, if it ends up being one page, I don't know, maybe it fits in the, it's not going to be one page, I'm pretty sure, but uh, just wanted to say that it maybe just kind of depends. Yeah. The typical design answer, it depends, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's these, um, another question I had is, what is your thoughts on using Fig Jam as being the you know, that's going to be the resource that the people are going to use in the kits. I like Fig Jam because it's really collaborative. People can just make a copy, start jamming in there, that kind of thing. Um, initially, I actually started creating a lot of the resources in um, just normal Figma. And I was like, no, this is just not working. It's just not working. And then I pivoted. I just pivoted. I was like, okay, yeah. So I still, whenever, whenever you go into a tool, you lose people. Uh, I think a very basic website is still the most globally accessible thing. FigJam is way more more friendly than Figma, but you still have this weird, crazy big canvas that you have to navigate around and zoom in and zoom out, and I don't know. And 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 it's very un uh, it's very um, unguided. It's not the right term. Like you have to discover. It's like you're looking at a map, and you have to figure out where you're gonna go. It doesn't yeah. tell you. Yeah. So uh, I think it works for people comfortable with it. Uh, but I think otherwise, a very simple website with links and scrolling is like, you know, the, the most essential format that we have these days. Um, but yeah, but maybe, maybe maybe some of the initial things can be are good on the website. And then maybe some other things where it's, it's more task focused, where mm -hmm. let's say you have an explainer you haven't explained about personas or whatever on mm -hmm. the website. And then at some point it says, hey, you know, we have this template here. If you want to make your own, just hop over here and here's a five minute video on how to use it and click here to duplicate your own Figma jam file or so. Uh, something like that I could see work well. You're on board. But, you know, yeah. Figma fig jam is probably to many people like what GitHub is to us, or at least to me. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll be like transparent. I'm. I, I get anxious thinking about GitHub. <laughs> I'm not there yet, right? But I'm committed, right? But are most people committed to Figma Jam? Pro pro probably not. So that said, I totally agree with you, Christoph. Um, I think <clears throat> that uh, at the very least, foundationally, this should be tool agnostic, and uh, we can still have uh, templates for folks to use. Um, if they if they are users of Fig Jam, I think I think both could be true. Yeah, yeah. And some people may also want to print them and sit around the table and draw on them or so, like the like all these Canvas tools that are, exist out there: user persona Canvas, business model Canvas. 
Seems like those more like servers thing. design, the service design uh, uh, methodologies, right? Yeah, I also You're saw right. a a design system canvas recently. So I think this just having a sheet with some fields to fill in that you print out and go over seems to be pretty popular, simple format too. But you know, I, I think uh, I think you can make some, but some of this simply just based on what how people want to use it, or just ask other people in the yeah. uh, researchers, designers. And I think that's going to come in handy because Art, when you do the usability testing on the UX research toolkit, this is the kind of feedback you'll get back. And then we can just go from there, take that feedback and um, yeah. I love it that we're doing usability testing on a UX research toolkit. <laughs> it's perfect. It's just, <laughs> it's so good, so good. <laughs> Jan, you're laughing. <laughs> It's crazy what I'm geeking out on. <laughs> no, it's awesome. I, I, you know, basically we are testing the approach by, you know, creating tools for this approach. So it's awesome. I can just imagine Art posting to LinkedIn. Guys, I'm doing some usability testing on a UX research toolkit. <laughs> priceless. Priceless. <laughs> Absolutely priceless. Okay, cool. Okay, I'm going to jump back into, so we discussed competitive research. Um, so feel free to keep on commenting in there and then also have a look at the um, uh, Figma FigJam file. So that one's done here. I'll close those ones. Um, so currently within build and scope or rather scope and build, um, I'll rename that scope and build. Um, yes. Um, we have the competitive research, the jobs to be done, that will be our next call. And then we can just message each other on Signal to see when would be a good time to have that next call. I know Christmas is coming up, so, um, you know, totally understand if you guys want to do that next year. So we can just message on, um, on Signal. Um, and then the user journey mapping is the next one. Um, yeah, this one also has a fig gem file as well. I will start with the Google. I haven't had a chance to review this one, but I, I will. Um, yeah. I will definitely jump in and begin contributing. Yeah, cool. I, I This one, I mean, I'm, I literally am at the beginning stages of the user journey mapping one. Um, as you can see, it's just bare bones. I've written here, identify personas. Um, this is a little bit of an unconventional step that I did, added here. Um, map out what we assume is the user journey of the persona. Um, I added in this one because this is would be really speaking to the stakeholder and asking the stakeholder like, hey, um, what do you think is the user journey of the, um, uh, you know, this person you're targeting? Um, it's something that That's I did. Critical. Yeah, I, I, it's something that I did with um, with Wallet Scrutiny. We I spoke to Leo and I asked him, um, you know, hey, what do you think is the user journey? You know, because then it's bringing that feedback back to the the owners of the of the project and saying like, you know, this is what we assume it is, but this is actually what it really is. Um, so, yeah, you said that's essential, uh, Jan. Sorry, what? You said that's essential, or was that art? I don't know who said that. Uh, I don't think I. Yeah, that's it's essential to get feedback from as many parties as as you can, especially people. Um, a stake in the success of this project, right? Yeah. So this one, I I personally need to work more on the user journey mapping one. Um, I really need to add some more meat to it. Um, because I mainly worked on the fig Figma file. Um, this Figma file is based off of um, someone within the uh, Bitcoin design community. His name's Jakob. I see we only have eight minutes, but his name's Jakob. Um, he basically um, created a user journey map. Um, and I kind of just took this idea from the map that he created. Um, so feel free to also just look at that, comment on it, say what you think. Um, so I'm I worked more on the FigJam file and I worked less on the actual document itself. So, yeah. Nice. That one needs needs some work from my side. Um, yeah, and then it's pretty much the jobs to be done, which will be our next call. So I think 
I think for me is continue working on the user journey mapping one is the text on that one. Just get a little bit more meat into the text so that you guys can comment on that one. And then if you guys feel comfortable um, doing the jobs to be done together, just I'm letting you just free reign, like go for it. You know, if, if you guys would like to do that, otherwise I'm more than happy to do it as well. Yeah, I'm fine. Like when I will be preparing for the next call, as part of it, I can kind of draft something up and, you know, feel free to you know, up things, change things, update things. And yeah, I'm happy to do it. So from a, a next steps point of view, Jan, do you want to take a stab at the first sort of uh, skeleton slash draft and then loop me in or do you want to collaborate on the skeleton and draft had it what would you like most i feel that the most efficient would be if i draft something up and then you know you can start commenting adding things but you know up to you but that's how i would do it let's do that i love how relaxed we all are this is just amazing i'm just loving this collaboration i wish we can just <laughs> You know, I wish we could have some like you know office where we work. You all fly in once a week and just jam together on relaxed couches. The UX research hangout. <laughs> oh, you have it! Oh, I like your Christmas tree. That's a nice Christmas tree. You've got all white lights on it. It's really nice. Thank you. I'll tell the hotel they did a great job. Oh, that's not even your Christmas tree. I forgot you're in a hotel. Totally forgot. Cool. <laughs> Let's uh, let's wrap up the call, guys. I mean, um, I think it's pretty clear what the next steps are. Um, we can just uh, jam on signal in terms of when we would like to meet again, um, just so I can get a feeling of in terms of proposing date ideas to you guys. Um, are you feeling like, OK, because two weeks from now is going to be what is two weeks from now going to be? That's going to be we're going to be in the middle of Christmas two weeks from now. That's yes, 20. 29th yep. i'm going to be in berlin on the 29th <laughs> nice so no i do not want to have a call then i'm going to berlin for new year's eve so no oh nice nice yeah i, I would do it after the new year as, as well like let's let's have a one week off and uh you know enjoy other things than bitcoin and then we can start again first week of jan yeah. yeah 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 all right i'll i'll propose some ideas um on signal for first week of uh first week of jan yeah. yep sounds good there's there's a the fifth uh if we could start like at 45 past the hour like we started at the hour if we could start 45 past the hour that would really help so um, what what's 45 past the hour so um like whatever we started at this hour if we started 45 minutes later Okay, so because today we started at three o'clock my time, so we started so three forty-five. Three forty-five. That would make a big difference. Cool. We kind of do, yeah. Okay, so three forty-five would be more aligned with your kind of schedule. All right. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I, I had to wake up at six thirty today, <laughs> which is okay, but. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. That is dedication. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. Wow. We will shoot for a later time, Art. We will do that. <laughs> cool. Thank you. All right. I'm going to just stop the call recording. Thank you, everyone, for joining the call. Then we can just, um, let me just stop the call recording. Stop. Confirm.